It's Kelsey and Kate, and welcome to episode three of That God Chat. Today we are talking about the parable of the prodigal son, which just so happens to be my favorite parable of the Bible, just because, you know, I felt like that's where I was. I mean, not now, but I used to be there, and I'm not anymore. So that's, that's why this one was so special to me, because I was like, hey, that one's me. Anyways. You really like it a lot. I really like this one. Oh, by the way, the devil's attacking me today, but it's not working. He's not holding this chick back. Nope. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, um, a parable was a way Jesus talked. Are you familiar with the other parables? Yeah, most of them. And to me, it's kind of like stories with a moral. Mm-hmm. It's a story with a truth. And they really weren't intended to be understood by everyone. If there was supposed to be kind of a puzzle that made your mind inquisitive to search out other truths that are in the Bible. <laughs> that so squeaky. Yeah, it's not. I'm going. Girl. I'm good. <laughs> so, um, would you like to read the story since yeah. I'm squeaky? I I'll read it for you. Okay, start with verse 11. It's Luke 15, verse 11 through 30. All right. Um, the parable of the lost son. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and then squandered his wealth and wild living. I almost forgot how to read. <laughs> after he spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So when, so he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him any. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. <laughs> this is my favorite verse in the whole Bible right it's here. A good one. But while he was still a long way off, his, his father saw him and he was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Like seriously, every time I read that, I tear up. That's my favorite verse in the whole Bible. The son, <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> the son said to him, I Father. Feel like you need a hug. <laughs> The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring him the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. It's always the fattened calf. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what's going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in, so his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and to be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Yay. I can't believe I teared up. I mean, yeah, I that's can. wonderful. It's just... And um, so whenever I first heard about this story, well, for years, actually, I heard about it at church and I couldn't really understand. I'm like, well, he squandered everything away. And the one that's at home working all the time, you know, what did he get? He didn't get as much in the end. But then I kind of started researching it a little bit. And um, do you know what prodigal is? I probably should have Googled that. No, it's the okay. exact definition. I shouldn't have put you on the spot. But a prodigal is somebody who's kind of wasteful. 
um, like a spendthrift, lives for the moment. And uh, the younger son, uh, he wanted to get away from rules and hard work and hard living, everything, and be all on his own and yeah. be free. And so he went to his father and asked for half, his half of the money. So everything left belonged to the older brother. Excuse me. <laughs> so anyway, he went to his father, and his father gave him that money. Probably no, yeah, like probably, most parents well, would. Reluctantly, but... Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt that you're not going to throw everything away, but you're a kid, so you probably will anyways. Right. So I'm sure that's kind of what he was feeling, but obviously he didn't act on it because he gave him all of his... He did. All of his share. And free choice. Yeah, for real. So um, the younger son was reckless and wasteful, mm -hmm. and he lived, what they used to say, high on the hog. <laughs> yeah. He lived it up with parties and the Bible says harlots, and he's having a good time. And then a famine came through the land, and it wiped out everything. And he, all of a sudden, he has no money. Mm -hmm. And his father, he's left him now. He's living in the big, he's been living the big life in the city. And um, he gets a job where he's working with swine. Which is not kosher no. for a Jew because, you know, they're not supposed to be around pigs. And so this would be like a very lowly job. And he doesn't even get paid. He gets to eat the corn husk. Oh, my goodness. And he says, even my servants have the better life. And so he runs home to his dad. He says, Dad, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I'm truly sorry for what I've done. And his father wraps his arms around him. And, you know, he just loves him anyway, mm -hmm. like our Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. right? And like we do our kids. And I really can't understand this from a parental perspective. Mm -hmm. And I would probably be guilty of the same thing, no matter what they did. And, you know, when we go to God and say, we're sorry, I'm <laughs> really freaking up. <laughs> when we go to God and say we're sorry and um, just ask him to forgive us, he loves us. And that's, I think that's what the first half is about. Mm -hmm. And so um, it kind of goes, this parable goes hand in hand with some other parables, the lost sheep, the pieces of silver, the tax collector, and some of the other ones. Each one is like a piece of the pub puzzle mm -hmm. with the parables. But anyway, after the son comes home, the father's throwing him a party. He's got the fatted calf out, the poor fatted calf. And <laughs> then he's giving him a robe and a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. And it is a big deal. So now he's gotten more of the inheritance money with the party. Okay, so we move on to the older son. Well, the older son's out working in the field, and the father goes to the older son. Unlike the younger son, the younger son came to the father. Mm -hmm. The older son, um, he was kind of, he had resentment in his heart for, yeah. for the younger son, and outwardly he was doing all the right things, but inside, yeah, he had problems, and I can appreciate this too. And so he goes to the older son to kind of calm him before he gets to the party, I imagine. Um, so uh, the older son, he's like, what do you mean you're throwing him a party? You haven't even given me a goat and you're giving him the fatted calf. Kind of makes me think you're feeding me chicken and he's getting steak. <laughs> yeah. So um, he he's really mad. He says he should be punished. And but the problem is he was wasteful too because he wasted his father's love so who is the prodigal son well both of them both in of their them. own ways that's right but i think the the worst one is the older one yeah because he wasted his father's love uh, and he was resenting what he was doing he had sin in his heart and he wasn't asking for forgiveness he was just resentful and so he continued to do that, where the younger son, he came out with a little bit more in the end, although his, everything he got to begin with was wasted now. Yeah. And so he comes out with more in the end, but 
or less in the end than he had at the beginning. But, but he, monetary. Yeah. And and physical and tangible things, he came out with less. That's right, but he really had more. And I think that's, to me, uh, this is a lesson about us in our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I, I do feel that way. Um, and one of the things that I was reading today about it when I was studying some more about it was, like, and like in the middle of the parable, whenever he realized that they were getting treated better at his father's house, you know, he already had in his head the script that he was going to say, you know, right. I'm not good enough to be called your son. Just let me be a servant. Let me work off what I squandered of yours. And then when he got there, like before he could even get it all out of his mouth, his dad was just like, no, you're here. You are not dead to me anymore. Come here. Let me love you. And that's, that's how I feel like, not that's not how I feel that's how God treats us sometimes because you know when we do things that we know we shouldn't or we live a life that we shouldn't and then you know you get it all in your head like okay well you know I'm gonna go to church every Sunday I'm gonna read my Bible every day I'm gonna earn God's love that's not how it works no at all like no, all you good. have to do is come to him and he loves you and yes. he forgives you. That's right. All that other stuff just builds your relationship mm -hmm. stronger. But if you're doing it with a resentful heart, mm -hmm. what purpose is it? If exactly. you feel like you, I've got to get up at 5 o'clock every morning and read the Bible for two hours. And after a while, it's just something you're checking off your list. Yeah. It, and that's, that really that's really not good? a relationship. No. At all. That's just doing it to say you did it. And, you know, so to get the credit by everyone around you that's watching you, but you don't need their credit or their approval or anything like that. It's all about go oh, in your closet and pray yes. in your prayer closet. Yeah. Yes. And also another thing. Oh, I read this. I read this today and it made me so happy. So he ran to him and back then it was indecent for the men to show their legs. Oh. So the fact that he had to pick up his clothes to run so he didn't trip on it, not only did that embarrass him, but he was trying to get there before the rest of the village saw him because they would have had this horrible ceremony that had some really weird name that had a whole bunch of Z's in it. Right. That people who had done that and they came back, they would like break this pot in front of them and pretty much excommunicate them from their community because of everything that they wasted but because his father got to him first and you know showed everybody this is my son he is back now he is mine mm -hmm. it it like solidified everything like you know what everything's going to be okay because he's home now it so. makes me think of the first episode we did when I talked about the Talmud and mm -hmm. how there were a lot of traditions. And I think over time, even today, people have traditions and they may not even know why they're doing them. Mm -hmm. They're just going through the routine of things and maybe they're good or maybe they're not. But I think over time that happened to the Jews and I'm sure it's changed now. Yeah. But when Jesus came along, there were a lot of traditions that they don't make a lot of sense to me but I guess it was important to the Jewish leaders yeah yeah but um this seriously is my favorite <laughs> my favorite parable um and I also did find a couple songs that I'm going to link down below that are prodigal related oh that's great um, <laughs> yeah I was listening to them today I and I was like I was like trying so hard not to cry at my desk because this is just so close to my heart and I was like all right, I should probably stop. <laughs> and doesn't one of them say "run like a prodigal"? Mm -hmm. I've heard that. Running like the prodigal. Yes, yeah, I love that song. Awesome. Yeah, and music sometimes is really good for your yes, heart. It is. Uh, one more thing before we wrap up: What do you think the servants represented? Because it said the servants put they put the celebration together. The angels. That's right, the angels, because. Um, the Bible says, Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. That's Luke 15, 10. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, so I, 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 I no, I swear I didn't see it until I said that. That's awesome. Yeah, because they were surrounded by angels, yeah. just like Aww. you Aww. and me. 
That's so and awesome. all our viewers. Yeah. Isn't it awesome we can just run to God? Yes, it is. It's so awesome and so freeing because, you know, no matter how far you go, you can always come back. It's hard to explain. Um, a lot of things you can't really see, mm -hmm. but you have to trust with faith. And if you do, you will be so blessed. Yes. Yes. I guess that about wraps it up. I guess it does. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you share this so it can help somebody else out. And subscribe to our channel and we will do another video soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.